Camden during the Hotel Era, 1882 to 1941. The Hotel Era was truly an extraordinary time in Camden's history. For the wealthy Northern and Midwestern visitors who spent the winter season here, it has been described as one gigantic house party. The height of the era was the 1920s, when money was flowing abundantly for those investing in the stock market or heading up large corporations. The largest of those house parties was at the Kirkwood Hotel. In addition to fine dining for three meals a day, laundry service, and comfortable rooms, the hotel organized activities for the guest. Group horseback rides to Knights Hill meant a picnic with a Kirkwood Hotel box lunch and drinks. Paper chases engaged scores of riders for a competitive race through the piney woods around Camden, always ending in an afternoon meal in the woods. Buggy rides, polo matches followed by late afternoon English teas, golf outings, target shooting, fox hunts, horse shows, parties, and concerts on the lawn were offered for the winter colony's entertainment. In the 1930s, the Carolina Cup steeplechase races began at the newly built Springdale Race Course. The hotel proprietors knew that this social life was a large part of the draw for visitors, especially when Camden's beautiful outdoor winter weather could be enjoyed by Northerners and Midwesterners accustomed to several feet of snow all winter. Running this winter house party took many hands of both black and white workers. Located on the grounds of the Kirkwood Hotel were the stables, golf club house, golf course, polo field and grandstand, tennis courts, boiler house, laundry, and other service buildings. The hotel could accommodate 350 guests in its 200 rooms. It operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, from October through April of each year. The Kirkwood Riding Stables maintained 25 riding horses for rental. In addition, because the Kirkwood sponsored the Camden Polo Team, the grounds also housed the Polo Stables, where the 24-plus polo ponies needed during the matches were housed. The opportunity for employment at this one resort hotel was tremendous, and this does not even factor in the personnel needs of the Court Inn or the Hobkirk Inn two of the other large resort hotels in Camden. Carl Abbott, the manager of the Kirkwood during the 1920s, wrote, We brought many of our staff down from the north, but also employed a large number of colored people who lived in Camden as bellboys, chambermaids, kitchen help, yardmen, and caddies. Many of these people had been employed as butlers, maids, and cooks in southern homes and were especially well trained. Priscilla Ann Oliver stated, Many local persons, particularly among the black community, found employment at the hotels. Some of these alliances were so successful that many of them moved with the season with their employers. The economic impact the hotels made on the Camden community was significant, but it went beyond monetary gain. Joan and Glenn and Abinant wrote, Traditions of the professional wait staff were maintained with pride and dignity, and some local families consider it a point of prestige to have had a family member employed thusly in the resort business. Many people employed in the hotels continued in their respective professions for the rest of their lives. There were many families like the Gambles, whose lives revolved around the hotels. Edna Gamble recalled in 1979 that her father, Edward Gamble, was the caretaker and gardener for the Kirkwood when she was a child. The family lived on Gordon Street, but Mr. Gamble stayed at the resort hotel as a caretaker. His daughters took turns staying at the Kirkwood with him during the off-season, so he would not be lonely. The whole family was eventually asked to stay at the hotel when it was closed. Edna remembers herding the family's horses, pigs, and chickens up the hill to the Kirkwood. Mrs. Gamble, a dressmaker, was employed making the uniforms for the hotel maids, as well as sewing for guests at the hotel. Edna remembers the hotel era as a magic time during her life there, between 1915 and 1924. Beyond the actual employment of people, the hotels provided a steady market for foodstuffs and fuel. Eggs, butter, chickens, vegetables, and firewood were always in demand. 
These were the things that Southerners were good at raising and gathering. The downtown stores and businesses also prospered from the hotel population. Upscale clothing and gift shops flourished in Camden during this era. Cottage industries also prospered. Basket makers, seamstresses, laundresses, and needleworkers. African American businesses abounded in Camden during this time as well. The community proudly contained 26 black grocers, five filling stations and auto repair shops, taxi service and auto livery, and numerous African American barbers who served both the white and black populations. Carl Abbott described his time spent in Camden at the Kirkwood as unique in his world of managing resort hotels. He wrote, Camden was truly antebellum south, a sleepy little town surrounded by many old-time plantations and steeped in tradition and historical lore. It was a horseman's heaven, where bridle paths and hundreds of sand roads wound through great stands of longleaf pines and across sunlit cotton fields. The Kirkward sat on a hill surrounded by green golf courses and polo fields. Its massive white columns and winding entrance stairs gave it an air of stately dignity. The great doorway, with its beautiful fan and side lights, opened upon an interior of spacious rooms designed by gentle folk for gracious living. The doors were flanked on either side by huge fireplaces where pitch pine logs had burned these many years. It seemed the beautiful rooms were doing their dividend best to give a warm welcome of Southern hospitality to the Northern guest. All of this graciousness was the combined effort of many employees providing the services required for the winter colony at Camden, and Camden's economy was the winner.